Scandinavian too, by the way. That's why we Neil Young. Young. That's why we played it. That's why we play it. We Thank always you. play something that, you know, specific for the person that's coming out. Thanks, eh? And you're Canadian, eh? <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's good cool up there. Yeah, Neil Young, yeah. 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 Actually, Rob and I, you pretty, I think he mentioned earlier, he and I did one of our first cons ever together for Supernatural with Mitch Plaggy uh -huh. and, uh, and Mark Pellegrino. And Mark Pellegrino. Just the four of us. In a place called Birmingham. And we did it to a hall of, like, 50. And they were there. <laughs> and you were there. <laughs> yeah, but well, we had a great time. It was so good. Yeah, so good. Um, that was where one of my, far Richard Spade, one of his favorite stories is we were on a train coming back and we spent the whole weekend together, just the four of us, so pretty tight. And so uh, I said to Mitch Pelleggi, uh, give me your emails, I'll send you my info. So I, I emailed him and I said, this is Rob Benedict. <laughs> Mitch. Ten minutes later, reading his email, the fuck is Rob Benedict? <laughs> like dead serious, because we never really formally, I guess, with the last name, it threw him off. He's like, who the fuck is Rob Benedict? I was like, uh, that's me, bitch. He's like, oh, Rob, I'm so sorry. So I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> Every time I see Mitch now, ten years later, he's always like, the fuck is Rob Benedict? You know what happened? <laughs> Funny stuff. Anyways, great to see you. You too, man. You too. Thanks for doing it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Latin Sway. What an incredible man. Um, I want to start by saying that I'm, I'm a pretty open fella. Um, so feel free to ask questions related to Supernatural, related to my beard, to my nationality, Eureka! really just, and Eureka, uh, anything really. Um, so just feel free, I'm here to have a good time and uh, have you get to know me. Uh, so I started out by doing Supernatural Cons, as I mentioned, in Birmingham, but I haven't done a Supernatural Con for like 10 years. And I heard the Supernatural crowds are freaking amazing. I've done some Once Upon a Time Cons, but you tend to have to be PG, so it's a little bit like, you know, you kind of sit with your legs crossed. I can't do it, but I've heard people can. Um, and mind your P's and Q's, so it's, it's kind of refreshing to be a little bit more chill. So thank you for having me in Las Vegas, and if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer anything. Way down where? Hi, Chris. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Uh, my question is, is, what is the most interesting thing you've had to learn to do for a role? In the, what is the most interesting thing I've had to learn to do? Um... Probably fly, <clears throat> and by that I mean they, they attach me to wires. Um, I did this show called Sanctuary, I don't know if anybody's heard of it. So I did an episode of that called The Adjuster, and I was like this Superman type creature. I, and how I ended up getting um, my abilities is I fell. Our whole um, adjustment firm uh, did like a, a bonding exercise. We went out to the woods and I ended up falling into this pit and this slime covered me and it endowed me with the ability to do whatever I wanted. So if I wanted to fly, I could just think fly and I did it. But I did it really terribly. So I would think that I was being a hero, like somebody was jumping off a building, I would figure I'd go save them and I'd fly into them and break their ribs kind of thing. <laughs> So, but anyway, in this particular episode, the whole starting sequence is me flying in and beating up a bunch of gangsters. And so they got me on these wires, and I was on these wires for about six hours. And so I wasn't drinking any water, um, because I was scared to have to go to the bathroom and take off all this stuff. I was wearing like neoprene suit, jogging suit, uh, exoskeleton, uh, another suit. And then, um, so about seven hours in, I nearly passed out. I was on the wires. And I <laughs> nearly passed out. And the funny part of that, because that's not a very funny story at all, but the funny part about that is that the stuntman who was um, waiting there ended up having to get into my suit. And it was drenched. So I'm almost passed out and he's having to like slime into my gear. <laughs> I felt terrible. But it was definitely like the craziest thing I had to learn. You know, I had to learn how to moderate myself. I had to learn. It's crazy. It's flying's awesome, but it's crazy, guys. Don't do it. <laughs> do it. Thank you. Oh, hi. Hello. What a lovely game of soccer you played. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank the you. The photos you retweeted. 
Oh yeah, okay, cool. Um, I, on Eureka, yeah. actor, actor wise, what was the ratio of nerd to normal person? <laughs> Pretty much, I'd say the only non nerd was Ed Quinn. Otherwise, everybody, for the actors, you mean in the cast? Yeah. Yeah, Colin's a nerd, Neil's a nerd, Erica, Erica Chera, she's in the 100. Um, she was kind of a nerd. We were, we were all pretty darn nerdy. And thank you for those photos, by the way. Very, very cool. She's referring to the uh, celebrity soccer match. So I helped um, organize that whole thing. And it was a very, very cool event. Jared and Jensen came and played in it, too. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. She said my son did a great job. He's my hero. He's my soccer hero. Hi. Hi. So if you could pick any role, genre, like what's your dream movie or dream TV show to star in? Like, like if I could star in any style thing, it's really typical, and I feel bad about saying it, but like Game of Thrones, any kind of thing like that, and I would like to be the kick-ass dude. I would like to be like the Sam, but he's like the lead. Uh, and I mean Sam like as in like Sam and Frodo type thing. I would like to be the chubby lead guy. Like fat but he can kick ass, you know what I mean? So I'd be like, I would be like Jon Snow or something, but fat. <laughs> that or something really serious because I feel like that would be a huge departure for me. I often say to people that whenever I do a role I feel like there should be tuba music playing in the background because the parts that I get. It's always like, stupid sidekick guy, yeah, so my guy, I always feel like he's, there's tuba music going I'm not, degrading, I'm not degrading myself, I just feel that's the way it is. Thank you. Hello. Hi. So I'm a huge fan of the show Once Upon a Time. Cool. Uh, so I was wondering what you think your character would do if he was thrown into the supernatural world. He would align himself with somebody evil, um, I think. Somebody evil but good. Uh, basically, that's what he did in, in the Once universe. He aligned himself with Hook. Um, yeah, I would have to think he'd do something like that. He'd align himself with a demon or, or something. But either way, he would be a sidekick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Hey, how are Hi. you? Hi. Good, thanks. Um, what was it like being in Freddy vs. Jason? Oh, that was so cool. Um, when I auditioned for that in the first place, <clears throat> um, I went out for the original. So when you go out for a part, you audition. You probably already know this, but you go out for the part, you audition, and then you'll get a call back, which is with director and producer and stuff like that. So they get a chance to see you and get a feel for you in person. So I had auditioned for this, and I was a massive fan, specifically of Nightmare on Elm Street. And so when I got to go out for this, this part, I was like, yes! And it wouldn't have been a boom, 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 boom. So this was exciting for me too, so I ended up going out for the audition, and I loved it, and I felt like I did a really, really good job, and then I was shooting a commercial, so I couldn't make the callbacks, and I was like, devastated. And then they ended up just casting me off of the first audition anyway, which was Absolutely amazing. I loved every minute of it. The only drawback was that I was killed by Jason and not Freddy. <laughs> which is, oh sorry, spoiler alert. <clears throat> um, but it was so much fun. This is like my, I love, I love, 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 love horror. So yeah, actually I revised my former answer too about, um, about Game of Thrones. I would also start some kind, some kind of horror thing. Um, Getting the, I got a flaming machete through my chest, and we were in a cornfield in... I think we were in a, a town called White Rock, outside of Vancouver, and it was about 6 in the morning. And they hooked up this hose to me, and it ran down my chest, and down my leg, all the way back, about 100 feet, to a guy with a pump. And when I got hit with the machete through the chest, they would just go, You're a hit! And I'd have to go, like, I had this mouthful of blood, too, so I'd let the mouthful of blood go, and then that squib, that hose that came up my chest, would squirt a bunch of blood too. Fortunately, we got it in one take, because it, it meant running through a cornfield. It was so cool. I love it. I love horror. Thank you. Was it the corn syrup blood? What's that? Was it the corn syrup kind of blood? And it was corn syrup blood too. Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Hi. 
Hi. So, in Night Shifter, um, the episode in Supernatural yeah. you're in, how did it feel? Like, did you, was it hard with, um, when you died, when you were laying on the floor? Because I saw a blooper in the gag reel. Was it hard to keep a straight face or, like, yeah. try to stop doing with Jensen? <laughs> yeah. Those guys are insanely funny. <laughs> So any kind of scene, you don't want to be doing drama of any type or any kind of seriousness with these guys because they're incredibly funny. Um, and also I was having to like not breathe and being a bigger guy, like the, the camera, the shot I think of me on the floor was wide enough so you could see like my back and any breath is like on that tight a lens just amplifies it by a hundred. So a little tiny breath just looks like this. My back's doing this. So I'm conscious of that, I'm conscious of holding my breath, and then you've got Jared and Jensen there, um, who are hilarious. So yeah, it was definitely difficult, but I have to say that um, out of all the roles that I've done, that might have been one of the most rewarding roles that I've ever done. Um, <clears throat> Ronald was sweet, he was earnest, um, he had the best of intentions, um, I just really identified with him, and it was it was a real blast to get to shoot. And the fact that we got to shoot inside a, a legit bank, and my opening line is, I come in, and I get to bring a shotgun into the bank, and I go, This is not a robbery! <laughs> it was, it was every kid's dream come true. And I'm like, I, I, to Sam, I'm like, You shut up, I ain't talking to you, I don't like you. Like, to get to do that, too, everything about it was visceral, and then to get this wonderful kind of um, earnestness, the sweetness that, that Ronald had, you know, like, he was right. He was right the whole damn time. Um, so for me, that was, that was one of the best things. But to answer your question, and in short, uh, yeah, it was very hard. It was very hard. It was hard dying because of that, it was also hard dying because I didn't want to die. I had so much fun. So much fun. And thank you for that. That was a that was a fun question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, are you based in Vancouver mostly? I am based fully in Vancouver. Yeah. So my question was, um, how is Vancouver different, uh, like as an actor? Jared and Jensen talk about like the show is very different and the set is very different because it's in Vancouver versus LA, and that that's been a great thing for them. So I wanted to hear more about that. Uh, the, how is it? Working in Vancouver? No, say it again. Yeah, how is it working in Vancouver, and is it different kind of a, as an actor? Yeah, I mean, we've got <clears throat> the beautiful thing about Vancouver is that we, we can stand in for almost anywhere, at least, you know, Vancouver and surrounding areas. The surrounding areas can be anywhere. We have a place called Kamloops that's very deserty. Um, shooting in Vancouver, I love it. I love the forest. I love the mountains. I love um, all the locations that we get to shoot in. Um, I did a, a TV show called Harper's Island with Jim Beaver as well, which, thank you, thank you. Um, and we got to be on a boat, we got to be like on this little tiny island that's just outside of Vancouver as well. Shooting there is like, it's called Supernatural British Columbia for a reason. It is so magnificent. And I think, I, I mean, I can't speak for the rest of the cast or whatever, but I feel like getting out is a nice thing, despite the rain. Um, of the studio because studios studio is long and exhausting and there's no air and, and like in Vancouver it's the most beautiful place if, if you haven't been I would suggest going it is it is truly a magical place it's as magical as it looks on screen thank you it's so much fun thanks oh thanks guys hi hi I was just wondering if you had any entertaining or funny stories to share from the one episode you were on. I mean, it was basically that. It was basically when you come to a show, you don't get, um, you don't feel like you can sort of fool around or, or jerk around, you know what I mean? Like if you're just on the show for one thing. If you're on as a regular, it's a different story. So there wasn't too much of that. Just the general, uh, the general vibe on set was that it was quite relaxed. It was very early on in the show too. So I think um, Jared and Jensen were sort of getting their legs at that point. It, it, it was season two, I believe, and uh, it was just—it was all—it was all fun. Um, nothing in particular stands out right now. Um, and you're also working a lot of long hours too, 
you know, we do we would do like 14, 15, 16 hour days too. So in a bank in Vancouver, shooting guns. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Uh, so, like you were saying, Ronald was a really, really sweet character, and he had the best intentions, even though he was a little off with the laser eyes. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but I wanted to know, uh, you had to come back, uh, it's, I think it was season four, yeah. and you were playing Ronald as a very vengeful character. So what was it like to play Ronald as a very sweet character, and then just play him as a ghost? Very cool. Like, just to, just to be the complete opposite of, of what I was. It was fun. It was too short. I feel like I could have, it would have been really cool to be vengeful throughout an entire episode. I really just had that scene on the stairs, I think, and Are You There, God? It's me being. Um, cool, though. Like, to be bitter is awesome, and being the tuba guy, you don't get, you don't get a chance to be, like, a prick. So, for me, when I get to be a prick, it's quite exciting. <laughs> that came out so wrong. Thanks, dude. Thank you. Um, so you've played a lot of really fun, interesting characters on a lot of shows. Yeah. Have you ever taken anything from a set or a show that you particularly liked? If you promise you won't tell anyone. <laughs> I ended up taking my um, beanie from um, Once Upon a Time, the, the red Smee beanie. I don't think I'm supposed to say it. <laughs> um, don't, don't tell anyone. Hey. No, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. They have multiples of those. Um, that, basically, um, they did have, a, I think, a set sale for the Supernatural thing, but my stuff was gone. Um, I was going to get it. Uh, let me think. What else? Oh, uh, Harper's Island, I took my skull. Um, damn it, that's another spoiler. Uh, I took a fedora um, from Eureka. We did this episode that was like, I wore a zoot suit. I took the entire zoot suit and the fedora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still haven't worn it, but I'm gonna wear it again for a film that I'm doing down the road here. Um, I think that's it. I think that summarizes it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. Hi, I'm Hi. Anna. Um, I have a question. If you could go back to Supernatural and play any character you would like, who would you pick? Or if you were in Supernatural in real life, how do you think you would live, survive? I mean, I have to be honest, I don't think I would survive. <laughs> I would be a pretty quick exit, I think. But if I had my druthers, um, I mean, I, I can't think it goes back to me wanting to be like a lead dude that's like not not typically a lead. I think I would be Dean. I mean, I, like, it's, it's a stretch, but that's, that's what makes it so cool. And I hope you'll tune in. It'll be Aaron Never. <laughs> Dean. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it would be a rad idea to see a chubby fella, like a, a, cool, a cool chubby fella be a lead in something. I like that. Yeah. 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 Chubby. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. Um, Hi. When was the moment in your life that you realized that acting was your passion and something you wanted to go into? I've known forever, like basically just being a class clown and stuff like that when I was younger. Um, and then I went and watched a play. Um, what was it called? It was A Pocket Full of Sixpence, I think was the name of the play. And uh, I saw that. And I remember sitting there watching and just like looking at everyone and going like, there's like a venue for this shit? Yeah. Like, you can do that and people will come and just like laugh and like, I remember, I remember that being like, I think I was 11 or 12. And I instantly then, I ended up um, taking these classes in the town next to mine. I come from a small town in British Columbia called Armstrong and the town next to me, Vernon, had a, a drama class. And it was very serious and I ended up taking some serious drama classes and things like that. And uh, basically since then, but I moved down from my small town in, uh, in BC to Vancouver in 1999. And if, if it wasn't for my wife, um, then girlfriend, I don't know if I would have ever done it. So <clears throat> it's pretty special. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I think this side. Hi. 
um, Smallville was one of my favorite shows, and you were um, the toy man, I believe, on several yep. episodes. And I was just wondering what your favorite memories from any of the episodes you shot. Um, the whole the whole thing, really, like she was talking about my role as uh, toy man in Smallville. I played this uh, evil toy builder guy. Um, I had some super fun scenes with the arrow. Just the, the scenes in my workshop, I just adored. I, I built these little models and he was very um, meticulous and articulate. And I really enjoyed doing that. Actually, here's kind of like a behind the scenes thing. So when I was kind of getting into that role and when I auditioned for it, I was heavy into Dexter. And so I basically took Cater, or Dexter's cadence and adopted it for the Toy Man. Um, shooting the Toy Man was absolutely incredible, but I remember the day that I looked at Tom Welling and I was like, holy crap, this man is beautiful. <laughs> he like, <clears throat> he holds me, I'm like a robot version of myself, I'm robot Toy Man, and then Tom kind of has this scene where he like holds me over the balcony at this ball or this like fancy dinner type thing. And I remember looking at his face and going, I've never seen anything so symmetrical. <laughs> I like swooned. I was, it was so weird. It was, so that, like, that obviously sticks out to me, but like the whole thing, and, and to, to get away from playing um, just the silly, I mean, Toy Man is silly in his own way, but um, to be um, serious, to be serious about it. And the beautiful thing about, I think, um, Toy Man is that he doesn't have any discernible powers. He's just an asshole. So, like, to be a, a villain of that um, grandiose is, is pretty incredible, considering he can't do anything except put together clockwork. Like, that's super cool. So that was, that was a great one. That was a great one. Thank you. Oh. So, your job sounds really fun. It is. <laughs> Is there any part of it that you wish you could do without? Um, like learning lines? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds, it sounds silly, but like I love improvising too. So I feel like, I feel like if you just give me what you want in a scene, and I can go in and do that, that would be incredible. No, it's, it's a lot of work. I think what a lot of people don't realize is that when people book roles and things like that, and, and certainly for, um, for Jared Jensen, who who play a lot, um, it's it's an insane amount of work. Like you you do your day of work, you go home, and you're memorizing the next day. Like there's no there's not really any time off as an actor if you're working in that kind of capacity. So that's um, for me. It, I don't I don't have to worry about that so much. Like I generally guest star on stuff where I have recurring bits on things. And I'm not a lead, as we've well established. So I don't have all those lines to learn. So for me, it's not that bad, but it is, it, it's difficult. And auditioning, auditioning is quite hard too, I think. Like going into the room and then, you know, you've got five or six people sitting there looking at you, up and down, going like, is it good? I don't know. Even if you're like killing it. Um, so probably auditioning as well. You know, it's fun too. It's like, it, it's really an adrenaline rush. I'm a terrible diplomat. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Uh, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? You have been in so many things that I absolutely adore. Oh, thank one, you. But one of my favorite was Eureka. I wonder if you have any thoughts as to what it was like to be on that set or any really fun behind the scenes or any oddball things that might have happened? That was that was an incredible set. It was so much fun. We spent a lot of years together. Um, um, me and Neil got along really well. He played Fargo in the show. Um, me and him headed off. I was at his wedding. We were always goofs. So we were the ones that were doing all the goofing on that set. And that speaks to you being on a set. It generally tends to give you more freedom to kind of fart around and, and, and be a goofball. So for me, that was incredible. As, as far as specific things go, um, 
just like being off camera and messing with people who are doing their scenes. So you know that when you when you see a scene, they shoot one way and then they turn around and, sh and shoot the other way and you basically have to do everything exactly the same. So if you can, we would try and break each other, but this is in the age of digital. You couldn't do it back when it was filmed, but like you could do your, you could do your guy in a totally different accent. Like we would do that to each other, like pick our nose while we were talking to each other. It could be super serious. Um, just, that was an amazing time. I think I, I think I was on that show for like seven or eight years, or something like that, maybe six, seven, eight, I don't know. Yeah, it was brilliant. And playing Vincent, um, for those who don't know, this, this show is about a town of geniuses, and my guy was sort of like a culinary genius. And so my place was like the um, home hub. It was like, you know, the... Um, where they would come and eat. It was like at the end of every episode, everybody came and met up at, at Cafe Diem and cheers about the world being saved. It was a very, very fun thing. Thank you for that question, by the way. Thank you. And to you. Hi, Chris. Thank you for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. Will you say your last name so we can all know how to pronounce it correctly? Good. <laughs> so, it's Goche. So you would say, it's kind of like G-O-C-H-A-Y. Go Cherry. And my voice is gone, but I can assure you it's not coronavirus. <laughs> Thank you. I ain't afraid to touch it. Thank you. Go Cherry. No question, too. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, is there an actor, like we all obviously are fanboys and fangirls, is there an actor that you fanboy over? Like a favorite actor? Yeah, I, uh, I really like John Malkovich. It's kind, of a, it's kind of a strange one. It does, it kind of goes against type. Um, I, there's something about him and the way he speaks. And he really, he's, he's fascinating to me. I love, love, love him. Um, there's gotta be somebody else. Um, I mean, it would have been Robin Williams as well, who was fantastic. I did get to work with him on a, on a, he was amazing. I did get to work with him um, on a Christopher Nolan uh, movie called Insomnia as well. And he was brilliant. So in between takes and stuff, he would come out and just like, for those of us, I was like a bullpen guy. I had the stupidest part in that whole movie. This movie was so serious and so good. And then it was, I had a scene with me and Hilary Swank and uh, I played one of her deputies <clears throat> and so in this scene, she's like figuring out how this person was murdered and this person was murdered in a creek. So she has my character in the creek and then she's like, okay, a little to the left and I'm lying in this creek and the movie's going along, it's so serious, it's so good and everybody's like in rapture and then she goes, okay, can you move a little to the left? And I look up at her and I go, are we almost done here? My dads are freezing off. <laughs> And it's like this break, it's again, it's like the tuba music in the middle of like Mozart. You know, or Beethoven's the Ninth, and all of a sudden it's like boom, 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 boom. Are we almost done here? I'm freezing my nuts off. And that's basically it. That's my bit in the movie. And then you see me from time to time in the background. There's another little tidbit, just because I'm on this movie at the moment. There's a tidbit where I was watching, um, it's a scene where Al Pacino was talking to Robin Williams on the phone from the cop shop. And we were all kind of standing in his eye line because he was just rehearsing. And so um, I was like in this like window type thing and I was leaning there with a bunch of people. And he does it one time where I'm like, wow, that's Al Pacino. Mm -hmm. And then everybody kind of leaves, which I don't see. And he does the scene again. And there's just me in the window. <laughs> And he's staring at me, and I look. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit. So I quickly just ducked that. They were shooting, they were shooting. So when you watch, if you watch that film again, watch for him doing a phone scene, and, and you might, you might, uh, you have the knowledge now that there's a goofy tuba music actor standing looking at him, gawking. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Somebody always claps over here. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So, um, my question is about classic cars. My favorite classic car is a 69 Camaro, and I know most people here will say Impala because, you know, that's who he yeah. is. But, yeah. what is your favorite classic car? Oh, man. 
Man, I would go, I would probably go with a Camaro too. Something like stubby, muscly kind of thing. Like, is that right? You know, my dad had a Chevy Malibu once that had these big tires on the back. That was pretty freaking cool. Yeah, or like, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, how do you think uh, Ronald would have dealt with being in the world of Once Upon a Time? <laughs> no, that's like a, that's a cool spin actually. I thought of being super. I think that he would he would love it. I think he'd be super enthusiastic about sol solving crimes, probably when people didn't want it, want him to come there and help solve crimes. Um, I think he would be great. I don't know what his alter ego would be, though, because everybody has, like, an alter ego, right? Um, who would he be? Somebody super eager. He'd probably be Smee. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I hadn't thought of that. That is really cool. Um, yeah, I think he'd love it, though. I think Ronald would freaking love it. Ronald loves a good conspiracy and, like, figuring stuff out. You remember all those maps that he had on his wall and, like, that they absconded with, the bastards? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think he'd love it. Thank you. Thanks so much. Hi. Hi. Uh, you've told us some really great set stories. I was just wondering if you have any one particular that's either your favorite or most memorable from any of the sets that you've been on. Wow, okay. Um, I'm going to start by saying my worst because that instantly comes to mind. Um, I hate, like, sea creatures and things like that. And I was shooting that show called Harper's Island um, that I had mentioned before. And we shot, like, this thing, it's called a spec thing. So it was like a 10 minute version of what the show was going to be about. And then, um, so they had this, like, fake death scene for me. Um, my character was to be washed up on shore. Um, so I had to get in, in February in Vancouver, I had to get into the ocean in a, in a dry suit. But when I got into the ocean, I kind of put my hands back like that and leaned back. And as I was leaning back, all the water seeped into my wetsuit. And so I was like, so I'm freezing. And then, and then so John Turtletop is directing this thing. He directed National Treasure and stuff like that. And, um, and then he's like, okay, now bring out the crabs. And I thought he was joking. He wasn't, he wasn't joking. So there's a crab wrangler and he's got a bucket of crab, bucket with, filled with crabs about that big. And they just dump it all over my chest, all over my body. And then they had like three or four big crabs that they put on top of the little crabs. And I'm already petrified. At that point I wasn't even eating seafood, let alone having it on me. And so, and then it doesn't even, that's not even the worst, so I'm shivering, I'm mad, you know, they're setting up camera, I'm already in the water, I have to like sort of set it up there so they can get their, their camera angles and stuff like that. And then, and then we shoot it, and I'm freezing, and then I go back to my trailer, and I'm picking crabs out of underneath my wetsuit that are clinging on spots, and I was like, that was the worst. The best, um... Honestly, I think it was I think it was the bank stuff in Supernatural. Out of all the things that I've done, to be able to do that, like the scene was awesome. The scene with the boys was so cool. The getting shot was really cool. It was really dramatic and really good, and it was a wonderful departure for me. Um, but but the, that boyhood fas fascination of like going into like a live bank in Vancouver that I banked in before and getting to unload a shotgun. I also have friends on that show too that work in the crew. Like I'm, like I grew up with few, a few of the dudes that are like um, uh, one's a carpenter, one was uh, one of the head carpenters, um, a stock guy I know from Armstrong. So that whole that whole thing was absolutely amazing. So probably that. Thank you. Thanks so much. Hi. Um, my Hi. question is not supernatural related, but um, I'm a huge hockey fan. And yeah. Maybe it's trite asking a Canadian, um, but I'm going to Vancouver to watch a Golden Knights um, game. Nice, nice. I like the Golden Knights, by the way. Uh, well, okay, they're playing while you're here, so you should go see them. They're not playing while I'm here. I leave. I, I look that up. I leave. Uh, I leave tomorrow or Saturday. Oh. Saturday day. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, um, I really wanted to go and watch them. Oh well, I was wondering, um, where do you recommend we go and have beers? 
Ooh, uh, there's the Shark Club right beside GM Place. You can go there. Um, <clears throat> Main Street. There's a place called uh, I think it's I think it's just Main Street Bar is a good spot. But Shark Club is right there. You you're gonna have to go early. Um, who's your favorite player? On the nights? Yeah. Oh, I'm a Ryan Reeves fan. Okay. I'm a, I'm a Pacioretty guy. <laughs> okay, so, okay, Pacioretty, I was a signing last night and got his signature. Did you really? I did, and my dog's name is Maxi Pacioretty. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> oh my god, I, okay, so this leads me to something. I, somebody asked me who I'd fanboy over. I actually fanboyed over Kevin, do you know Kevin Bieksa? He used to play for the Ducks, but before that he played for us. And he was, he was in a Canadian tire uh, in Vancouver, and I was shopping, I, was, I remember I was getting my son Benjamin um, the Poe Dameron Lego set, and I saw Kevin Bieksa. And I was like, what? My wife's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I think that's Kevin Bieksa. And she's like, so leave him alone. And I'm like, no, I think that's Kevin Bieksa. So I timed out my shopping, so I was like following behind him, and like grabbing all the ends that I wasn't looking at, and I'm following him, and then he does the, the self-pay checkout thing, which was new at the time, and he does that, so I scramble up there and I do that. And then he's walking out to his car, he was buying, I think, like a, a stroller, and uh, I was walking out to my car, and my voice did something that I'd never seen it do before. I went like this. He's like, um, say for me to you, so uh, 20 feet, something like that. And I go, Kevin! <laughs> <laughs> I like shocked myself. I was so starstruck, and I didn't have anything for him to sign, so I got him to sign my Canadian, uh, my Canadian Tire receipt. <laughs> Which I then gave to which I then gave to my son the next day because I, I panicked. It, it wasn't. I don't even think it was my son's birthday. And I said, "Can you sign this? It's my son's birthday tomorrow." And so he signed it to Sebastian, and I was like, "Thank you." And it was it was crazy. So a hockey people I fanboy. Thank you. Thank you. Like very much. That's really cool. Thanks. Hi again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, what's the dumbest way you've ever injured yourself while drunk? <laughs> Burn my mouth one time with lighter fluid. I put that in my mouth. And... Ooh. I had a little mustache going on. I didn't have a mustache for very long. Um, that the dumbest way I ever injured myself though was on a, a set. Um, wasn't even drunk. Didn't even need to be drunk. And it's still my worst injury to date. I'm walking down the street. I'm meant to be walking down the street. I'm playing this conspiracy theorist again. Um, and I've got like this inverted umbrella that's acting as a satellite. At least he thinks it's a satellite. And I'm like, I'm focused on that. And it was one of the first things I did when I got to Vancouver. I was do also doing a play at the time, Romeo and Juliet. And I'm wearing these gum boots. And as I'm walking along, my boot gets caught in a groove like that. And I drop my umbrella, I go to pick my umbrella, my foot is like that, and my body goes over. But it's that way. So I don't know if you can if the cameras can zoom into that star. Oh wow. That doesn't really work. It's a big star, trust me. So I got a plate and like ten bolts going all up it. So that was that was pretty dumb. But maybe burning my mouth was dumber. There's been a lot of dumb things. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have somebody else? <laughs> hey, um, hi. I think I'm imagining most of the people in the room agree that Supernatural does an amazing job with secondary characters. Yeah. And I think a piece of it is the writing, like everything you're saying about your own character, like how many layers there are. Yeah. But I also think they do an extraordinary job of casting. Yeah. Um, and they don't seem to cast dicks, ever. Yeah. So, I'm wondering... Except for Richard. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not a, that's just a fact. Richard is, yeah. I'm 
wondering if there's anything from the auditioning process that was different, or is it just because they're hiring Canadians? It's funny you say this, and I guess I think we're wrapping up, so I'll end on this one. Um, when they originally cast this, they were looking for a 40, 50, or sorry, they were looking for a 50 to 60 year old guy. I went out against the guy who says okie dokie. I like him. He says okie dokie. So it was me against him and then like sort of his age group. And I think they kind of like went off the board. I was like a bit, obviously it was 10 plus years ago, so I was a bit younger at the time. They went off the board with it. So I think it was, um, it was fun and eye-opening for them. It was something completely different. And I remember somebody saying that if things were different, you know, we would have wrote it differently if we had known it was going to be like that. So that was very cool. And in that one, that was a great audition. Thank you. And thank you, Las Vegas. And I got I think it went okay. I don't know. I don't know. That's my first supernatural one, and I really enjoyed it.